G'day Jaffa Adventures. Welcome to the channel and welcome to part three of our emu wing installation. And this is all about dust sealing. Do these things actually keep the dust out? Now Jill and I were going on an Outback New South Wales trip. Unfortunately COVID threw us a curveball on that one. So we've decided to head up into North Queensland. And right at the moment we're in Urimbula National Park. Urimbula? 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 We don't know. We don't know. It starts with an E. National Park. And we have hit one of the dustiest sections we've had so far. Check this stuff Just out. Just bull dust. Just powdered bull dust. So we've done about 1500 kilometers so far on dirt tracks and these bull dust type tracks. And we'll determine whether these things actually leak or not. So stay tuned and let's get stuck into the adventure. So there's two things that I want to cover off on this video. Number one is, do these little puppies leak? Number two is, what are the top 10 installation tips that I can give you if you're going to tackle this with a 200 series cruiser? So first and foremost, do these things leak? Well, we've traveled over 2000 kilometers now on high speed dirt, on bull dust, on sandy tracks, and put them through their paces. So let's open it up and let's have a look. And there you have it. Hopefully the camera can show it. We've got dust sitting on the outside edge here. But on the inside edge, it is absolutely, completely dust free. And I would expect that to be the case as well because of the way that this stuff seal seals up. So if my experience is these things don't leak and others' experience is that they do leak, what's the difference? And there's two things that I can put that down to. The first one being adjustments. And there's several areas where you can adjust these to make sure that they're sealing properly. The first area is on these hinges themselves. So picture this bit of cardboard and this the side of your car. If these top hinges are adjusted incorrectly, it'll actually be sitting out like that. And when it sits out like that, you don't get a flush seal on this top edge. So it's a simple matter of undoing these four bolts on each hinge, pushing the hinge in closer, and bringing that door so that it's tight with the body of the car itself. So that's adjustment number one. Adjustment number two is on the bottom side. So you could have your emu wing like this that's actually sitting proud on the bottom side. How do we adjust that closer? You simply take these two tabs off and you actually bend them in a little bit. And that'll mean that it'll seal up tighter along this bottom edge. And it'll bring that emu wing in like that. Now you can tell if you've got this thing sealed up properly or not by looking at the indentation that this seal leaves on this seal. And you can actually see it squishes into this bottom seal here. So when it's sealed up properly, there is no way that that dust can actually get through. So those that are experiencing dust issues with these emu wings, I'd suggest that you've got a potential uh, adjustment issue here that needs to be sorted out. The second area where I think you could get some leakage is how you actually run your HVAC system inside of the car. So you've got two main settings on there. You've got a recirculation setting and you've got a fresh air setting. And there's a lot of cowboys out there that actually use recirculation when you're in dusty conditions. And you know what? That's just wrong. What you want to do is you want to create a positive pressure inside the cabin of the vehicle. And when you're recirculating the air, all you're doing is basically filtering it through the cabin air filter. But you're not creating any positive pressure. So if you hit a patch of bull dust, for example, and that bull dust jams up through a hole in the car, through a seal in the door, whatever it may be, because you don't have any positive pressure in the cabin, it just jets inside of the cabin. Now, if you've got your air adjustment on fresh air, it's pulling air from the outside atmosphere, bringing it into the car, and creating a positive pressure. So for dust to actually get inside of the cabin, it's gotta overcome the pressure differential between atmosphere 
and the positive pressure that's inside of your cabin. So if you're in really dusty conditions, make sure that you got that switched to fresh air and have that blower running at maximum. That'll give you the maximum amount of positive pressure inside of the cabin to keep that dust out. So that's the dust issue with the emu wings and I've got no dramas with them whatsoever. I would absolutely purchase these suckers again. It's unfortunate that Mr. Emu Wing didn't see fit to giving me these for free, but meh, you get that. The advantage that I really like about these is to be able to access the side of the car when the back, you know, for example, Jill can be working at the back of the car doing whatever she's doing, and I can very easily access from the side, which is just a brilliant, brilliant solution. So yes, I rate them very, very highly. Now one thing that Mr. Emu Wing doesn't do is in their instructions they leave out some pretty significant things. Like for example, they don't give you any instruction on how to remove the glass itself. So what I've done is I've put together the top 10 tips that you don't find in the Emu, Emu Wing instructions and I'll hit you guys with those now. So here they are. So I promised you 10 tips to help you with the install of these emu wings. So let's get stuck straight into it. Number one, get yourself one of these. I bought a whole kit. I didn't use anything out of the kit except for that. That slides in between your glass and the body and you pull that and it opens that seal up. You can find these suckers on eBay for 10 bucks. I don't know how you get the glass out without one of these little puppies without smashing it. So spare yourself some heartache and grief, grab one of them. Number two, get yourself a trim tool. These suckers are cheap as well, less than 10 bucks on eBay, and that'll help a hell of a lot removing the trim panels from the inside of the car. So trim tool, highly recommended. Number three, on the window itself, once you do get that seal cut, in the four corners of the window are tiny little clips that clip into the C pillar and clip into the D pillar. You've got to get those suckers out from the back side. If you don't, if you try and lever the glass, even though you've got the seal cut, you try and lever the glass with those still in place, you'll end up breaking the glass. So just be aware of those little suckers. They're out to get you. Number four, get yourself some of these trim retainers. Your panel will have several of these in here and I guarantee that you'll lose some and you'll crush some. You can pick these up on eBay for next to nicks. So grab yourself some of these when you put those panels back in and the panels will actually seat properly. Number five. While we're on the subject of trim clips, you got two holes in the C pillar. Mr. Emu Wing doesn't provide you anything to fill those holes with. So you'll need something to do that. Now I just used one of these little trim clips, put some of that black gum elastic around there and pop them in and that's worked quite well. But you'll need something to fill those holes. Number six, see this gas strut here? That ball on the end of the gas strut has a thread and that thread interferes with this panel. So what you need to actually do is drill a hole in the back side of that panel to clearance it for the thread on the back of that nut. Number seven, and it may seem obvious, but these bolts only can go in from the top down and you've got to feed them one at a time from the back of the hinge because up here you don't have the clearance. So you can barely get to the head of the bolt there with a thin spanner. It's a little bit of fiddling around, but it can be done. But you have to attack it. These two first, put them in here and then slide them up and then put the second ones in after that. Number eight. Mr. Emu Wing tells you to notch these out to allow for the clearance of the hinge, but what they don't say is that you actually need to trim off about three or four mil along the entire edge of this top panel. If you don't, it'll interfere with your frame and it'll hold the frame out from the body. Number nine, while we're on this sucker here, that panel has three clips on the inside of it that are impossible to get off. At least I found them impossible to get off and you actually have to cut them. That's what the little black thing looks like on the end of it. And you got a little slot that that black thing has to fit through and you cannot twist that to get it out 
So I ended up snipping all three of those off. Made no bit of difference in terms of refitting this panel because it still clips into those three retainers. It just doesn't have that little black sucker guiding it in the hole. Number 12, the last one. You get yourself plenty of these clamps. I had a dozen and I used every single one of them on one side only. So if you're doing two sides like I am, you can only do two sides every 24 hours unless you've cut 24 of these little suckers. And as I said, I used every single one of them. I think I might have picked those up on eBay as well. They're just cheap clamps, but they will hold that frame in place and that's exactly what you need. That concludes the Emu Wing installation video. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for joining along. Next time you see me, we will be out on the trails and sharing with you an epic adventure up the north coast of Queensland and then back south through the guts of the outback Queensland. Hope to see you on the trails. Keep the shiny side up, everybody. Have a good one. Bye now.